All right, the only thing we didn't talk about yet is the range, and it's a lot easier to do after you have the graph in front of you. We've got the range, which is the output, or the Y values. And the Y values, if you go from the bottom of the graph, this is going to keep going down. It's skipping over this Y equals 6, and then continuing on up top. And so the range is going to be all real numbers, except that horizontal asymptote. And so y is not equal to our horizontal asymptote, which was 6. And so that's what we just did here. We used our horizontal asymptotes in the graph to help us find the range. So let's go on. We're going to try a few more examples that are going to have different degrees to help us out with the horizontal asymptote stuff. But we're going to use our same thing that we've been doing. So x-intercepts. X-intercepts, again, the y value equals 0. Y-intercepts, the x value equals 0. So, 0 equals 1 over x squared plus 1. We multiply both sides by the x squared plus 1, or you ask yourself logically, 1 divided by anything will never get me 0. 0 times this x squared plus 1 is going to be 0 equals 1. So the answer is 0 doesn't equal 1, so it's never ever going to cross the x-axis. y-intercept. y equals 1 divided by when x equals 0. 0 squared plus 1. 1 divided by 0 squared plus 1 is 1 over 1. So y equals 1. So that's our y-intercept. Our vertical asymptote had everything to do with the denominator, just like our domain. And so we said our vertical asymptote set the denominator equal to 0. x squared plus 1 equals 0. So x squared equals negative 1. If you subtract the 1 over, take the square root of both sides, you get x equals plus or minus any time you take the square root of both sides. Square root of negative 1 is i. And so our vertical asymptotes, there are none, because those are imaginary, and they're not going to show up on our real number line, so we're not going to have any vertical asymptotes. On to horizontal asymptotes. Remember, we had p is less than q, p is equal to q, p is greater than q. If the denominator on top is less than the one on the bottom, sorry, the degree on top is less than the one on the bottom, that's what we have, degree on top, degree equals zero, because there is no x on top. The degree on the bottom is two, so we have p is less than q, because zero is less than two. So that's gonna give us y equals zero. That's our first kind. So I'm going to draw in our vertical, sorry, our horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Because again, get really, really huge numbers here. 1 divided by a really huge number is going to go to 0. That's why that makes sense. And domain. Domain, again, is very closely related to the vertical asymptotes. There are no real numbers that will make our denominator equal to 0. And so our domain is going to be all real numbers. Now, we don't have very many things to go by here, but we've found everything so far without our calculator. Now we're going to go to our calculator and use our 1 over x squared plus 1. I'm not going to be asking you guys to do this without a calculator this year. And so... You see, if you look really closely, I'm going to zoom in on this, change my window maybe to negative 3 to 3, and negative 3 to 3, so we can see this a little bit better. Notice how the 1 is actually a, a little maximum, and it gets up there and comes back down. So we'll just use that to our advantage and graph our function. Again, asymptotes, as it goes to infinity, it's not actually touching 0 getting extremely, extremely small, but not actually touching zero. And so our, our range is 
there are no negative numbers. And so y doesn't start until just above zero. And because our asymptote never actually touches zero, it's greater than zero. And then y is less than or equal to one, because when we plugged in zero, we got exactly one, and it's not getting any higher than that. And so we can actually combine these into one, where one inequality, where zero is less than or equal to y, zero is less than y, which is less than or equal to one. All right, that's that graph. Let's try another. X-intercepts, start there again, y equals zero. Zero equals 2x squared over x squared minus 9. What I'm going to say on this one is, notice how we've always been multiplying by this one. We've always cross-multiplied, in a sense, to get it over there. And it always disappeared. You can do that because it's only going to be what the numerator is that's going to make a difference on the x-intercepts. The denominator has nothing. Because if the top is zero, zero divided by anything is going to be zero. So when does zero equal 2x squared? Well, divide by 2, you get zero equals x squared. And then you take the square root of both sides, you get a plus or minus, but it doesn't really matter because x is equal to zero. And so I can plot that. The y-intercept, the x value is equal to zero. So y equals 2 times zero squared, 0 squared minus 9. So we have 0 on top, divided by a negative 9. y value equals 0. And that makes sense because we're right at the origin. Vertical asymptote. Everything having to do with the denominator. So say take x squared minus 9 equal to 0. x squared equals 9. And so x equals, take the square root of both sides, plus or minus 3. And so we have two vertical asymptotes now. 1, 2, 3. And 1, 2, 3. Two vertical asymptotes. That means our domain is going to be all real numbers, except x can't equal 3 and x can't equal negative 3. And I'm using that symbol again, all real numbers. Our horizontal asymptote. Notice on this one, our degrees, 2 and 2. And so p is equal to q. With p being equal to q, you take the leading coefficients. y equals a over b. And so our leading coefficient on top is 2. Leading coefficient on the bottom isn't there, so that's the implied 1. So y equals 2 over 1, or y equals 2. So I'm going to go up 2 on my y-axis. And so our whole graph is going to be framed by that. So 2x squared. You can put that in parentheses, but it's going to multiply that first, so it doesn't matter divided by x squared minus 9 in parentheses, and we graph it. Now I have my original window from the last time, so I'm going to hit zoom and 6 to get it back to that negative 10 to 10 and negative 10 to 10. All right, so you see that we've got this thing in the middle coming up to the, the origin and coming back down. We've got two little guys off to the side being framed up above. Like that. Again, we want to get our asymptotes exact, and the rest is going to be a sketch using the x and y intercepts. So what is our range? Our range, it starts from the bottom and goes up to zero, and then it it doesn't have anything in between here, and so y is going to be less than or equal to zero, because it actually reaches zero. And then y is going to be greater than two, because it never actually reaches the two. One more example. 